And speaking of minoritarian rule, let's listen to Rudy Giuliani. He, um, guy's running out of money. And he's doing a live stream these days. He's doing he's doing whatever he can to drive some uh, some attention. He is on with uh, Steve Bannon, former Trump advisor. Hmm. Um, is he current advisor to RFK? Have you read those stories oh. about the the Bannon was well, one of the guys photographed who really, with uh, Michael Flynn and RFK? Yes, who uh, promoted uh, uh, RFK's running, which is a shame, but. Great choice. Uh, and uh, former Arizona gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake, and they're on America's Mayor Live. <laughs> it created a deterrent effect. The fact that we did it, and John and I were talking about that today, the fact that we were doing it, we made it very public that we were doing it, and then I'll tell you one little dirty That's trick that okay. we played. Okay. One little dirty a trick, trick in New York. Dirty, I'm dirty, dirty trick in New York. I'm no, so but shy. By Republicans. Shy. Children around. By Republicans. Republicans don't know dirty tricks. <laughs> How about this one? Okay, give it so to they, me. So they went through East Harlem, uh -huh. which is all his. All right, pause it. Well, we, I should be clear. They're talking about his mayoral uh, uh, race. Go ahead. OK. And also, I should say that uh, Roger Stone, who was one of the biggest uh, people behind the Trump candidacy and is has been in the shadow of like every Republican successful campaign uh, in his career, literally calls himself a dirty trickster. So uh, that, that just give me a break. Republicans don't do dirty tricks. And you're a dirty trick in New York. I'm no, so but shy. Played by Republicans. Children around. By Republicans. Republicans don't know dirty tricks. How about this one? OK, give it so to they, me. they went through East Harlem, uh -huh. which is all Hispanic and. They gave out they gave out they gave out little cards and the card said, if you come to vote, make sure you have your green card because INS are picking up illegals. Oh, my gosh. So the they <laughs> spread they it all over the Hispanic. Yeah. Cat. After the election, the Clinton uh, uh, Civil Rights Division investigated me. I was on vacation after the election and I get a call from my lawyer, Denny Young, and he says, uh, uh, Rudy, we got a, uh, the Justice Department's investigating us. Uh, Janet Reno's coming after us. Uh -oh. We violated civil <laughs> rights. I said, Jenny, you're a lawyer. Think about it. What civil rights do we violate? They don't have civil rights. But we all we did is prevent people who can't vote from voting. Yeah. Maybe we tricked them, but trick tricking is not a crime. Oh. And in those days, we didn't have crazy prosecutors. Nowadays, they probably prosecute you for it, even though it isn't. And that's the way we took down. You know what, what? One of the fun things about having someone who's like barely holding on to his marbles uh, mm -hmm. go on and tell these stories is that you can almost there is a point like halfway through that story where he starts to realize like, oh, wait a second. I probably shouldn't. I probably should be telling this story. He's first of all, it gives you a sense of like how sort of like joyous they are. This is how, of course, it works. This is why he called it a dirty trick. This is why he characterized it as, the a, law. as a dirty trick that nobody else knew about, apparently. It is because he knows that, um, that Hispanic Latino people, um, particularly at that time, certainly in this time, face a certain amount of discrimination and presumption that they're not Americans and they're not legal. And therefore, like, what if I forget my green card and I go, I can get, and certainly this happened, we, you know, we saw stories of this, like, uh, full citizens, never mind people who were just, like, green card eligible, getting caught up in ice sweeps just because their last name is, you know, whatever, uh, you know, hi Hispanic sounding. And that's why it's a dirty trick. On top of voting, because, I want to go through hassle. Right. Exactly. I don't want to have to like wait in line to show my uh, green card or my prove my license. Like, you know, how do I show my license? What if I don't have a green card? What if I'm actually just a citizen? What if I have a family member who is uh, here without documentation? Me voting in this election could target them. Like, it, that, it, I'm reminded again of that that quote from the Big Short, where he's like, "Why are they? Why are they confessing? He's not confessing. They're bragging. Like he's bragging about this. Totally. And that's what's incredible. I mean, he th there's an understanding that this kind of politics happens all the time with Republicans, but Carrie Lake and Bannon are uncomfortable because they're like, you can't say this on e out loud. Exactly. Exactly. You can't say that you know this tactic is meant, and this is what he's saying. We know this tactic, which legally sounds completely fine, 
is a dirty trick, that it is meant to suppress votes. It's legal, and they can't prove anything, but still, it is a dirty trick meant to suppress votes that he is so proud of right. and knows was effective that 40 years later, he's bragging about it. Of course it'd be effective. Imagine if all of a sudden they announced, uh, yeah, you know, voting, it's going to be like going through customs on the way back into the country yeah. now. Yeah. It would depress turnout, obviously. Of course. Of course. We're going to make sure you're hassled. And... And we're going to make sure you're hassled because of, you know, if you if you got brown hair, just make sure that you uh, bring your license because we're going to be checking. And if you're not, you're going to be deported. Wait, what? But I'm, I'm a citizen. I have a license. But uh, yeah, just bring it. Yeah. Don't worry. Let me look at that. We're going to have no to reason this. to feel like uh, creeped out. Yeah, I'll show this to my manager. Give me uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> what, is, what is more likely that... Anybody under the circumstance I just said would go vote or someone who was, I mean, you know, like where, where I, as a U.S. citizen, brown hair, got to show your license and you'll be fine. Yeah. Don't worry. Even though we have like all the people out there to check, you're going to be fine. What's more likely that I won't go vote or the scenario where I know I've actually got fake brown hair and I'm going to try and vote anyways. And that it, because if you I dye really, your hair, you could get deported and exactly, uh, uprooted from like, your life. Like how many like uh, undocumented uh, immigrants are consciously know that they're not allowed to vote, but are going in to vote anyways because they really want to vote for, you know, Mark Green or uh, David Dink. And say, well, like, you can't even get like uh, you, you can't get, you know, people have lived in New York for, for decades to go and vote. There's literally studies about people who are undocumented in this country having lower crime rates because they're afraid of breaking the law and being deported. Well, the reason why... So they're not going to go vote for, like, that risk. That makes no sense whatsoever. The, they understand it's a chilling effect on other people that look like someone that might be undocumented. Right. It's, it, they know the numbers of this. They make it on the individual morality level, and that's a lie because they know, like, on the numbers, you make this... You make people's interactions with the state, particularly the electoral system, as scary and as, like, friction, uh, um, friction Full, as possible, yeah. and it'll cut down the numbers. Yeah. Without a doubt. And he knows it. He calls it a dirty trick himself. That's what's so great where they're all just sort of like, uh. <laughs> Carrie Lake is sitting there going like, I have spent my entire career uh, is a function of the complete opposite uh, uh, sort of posture that Dem that Republicans don't do dirty tricks and that um, we, the we request uh, uh, ID for legitimate reasons, not to suppress votes. And you're just sitting here reporting, <laughs> saying it out loud. That's a really important clip, incidentally. It, it really, really is. is. Yeah, I, it's, it's good that he's yeah teetering on the edge. He's probably a few uh, whiskey neats deep at that point. Yeah. So. Remember that clip of that Nixon advisor where he was on, uh, basically on his deathbed or something and he just outlined like the war on drugs? Mm -hmm. um, oh, Roger Ailes. Uh, not Roger Ailes. John uh, Ehrlichman. Uh, uh, Ehrlichman. No, no, not Ehrlichman. Ehrlichman. No, no. I, I don't remember his no, name. It was um, uh, Ailes' uh, mentor. Um Oh, Atwater? Shit. No, yeah, Lee Atwater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they so so, I was just thinking like maybe we'll get more and more of this as Giuliani continues to decline. Right. These, like moments of stark truth that it's he's a, not meaning to actually uh, you know package as such. It's a great reference. What did he say that like they did it to target his well? His he, political he, said, enemies? he said no. The, he said the way that uh, the way that it worked in terms of like um, the uh, activating people's racism is that you uh, basically. You get to the point by like the late 60s, early 70s, all, all you need to do is say busing. Instead of having to say the N-word, you say busing. Yeah, and that basically... racism faded out and yeah. you had to go to be uh, coy about it and being like, this is about property values and busing. That's yeah, very so helpful. He, so yeah, he basically was just like, that was our plan. Just make racism more, you know, sustainable. The John Ehrlichman one was the one he was at Nixon. They said that we're on drugs basically just so they could harass the left and black people. That's what I was conflating. Thank you.